Hey, this is Pastor Neuendorf and Pastor Rago. Hello. And it's great to be in chapel with you. We're supposed to talk about pastors and teachers and serving serving God. And so we were talking about why did why did we become pastors or why does a person become a teacher? Um, what kind of what do you remember about your teachers when you were in the Lutheran school up in Hemlock, Michigan? Well, they were always very kind and gentle. I don't know, back really? in your day, they might not have been the same way, but uh, I had a lot of good encouraging teachers who I could tell that uh, that they loved to teach, but also cared about me and, and wanted to tell me about who Jesus was every day. Some of them pretty strict? Mm, one or two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but not for you, because you were so good. I was perfect, yeah. yes. <laughs> I remember, Only Jesus is perfect. Uh, I remember, though, looking at teachers as a kid, and you think that the teacher or the pastor that they're very that that's an authority and you'd better not act up especially if, uh oh the pastor's here so <gasps> uh, my pastor pastor Ranky, was a big guy and with a deep voice and sort of scary actually why does a person become a pastor or a teacher and i'm i might have said when i was a kid i might have said because they they have to tell people what to do right but that's actually not not what's going on. I've got the, the book we use when we install a pastor or a teacher, and we have Bible verses that we read about what it's about. And, and uh, some of them, like, guard yourself and all the flock to protect the flock, the sh God's sheep, all of us. Or shepherd the flock of God that is among you. Exercising oversight, not because you have to, but because you want to, not not for money uh, and not being domineering that means not being a not being bossy but being an example to be to be like Jesus as as, as much as we can mm -hmm. to people and then and then what does it say about teachers there, there was a the verse we use for that it says be thankful in the way that you you serve uh, let the word of Christ dwell in you and teach and uh, lead one another in wisdom, and and it's this is talking about kind of what my teachers would do. We would sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs together. Yeah. This is a hard year when we can't sing, can't sing as we want to in our classrooms as much, and so we look forward to getting back to that. But it, with everything, do this with thankfulness, and whatever you do, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. This is what my, my teachers did for me. They were always trying to serve in a way that would show me who Jesus was for me and then help me to grow in that each day and, and lead me into that truth and, and knowing his love for me. So being a teacher or a pastor means being a servant and helping others. And it, and it means doing that joyfully because we live in the gospel where we know that we're forgiven for all the mistakes that we make. Uh, that we live in God's grace and it's going to be good. That's why we sing so much and that's why we that's why we pray joyfully together. Why don't we pray together now? That's great. Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, all the teachers and everybody who serves us at St. Paul and the opportunities that you have given to them to, to lead us and, and guide us in knowing who you are. We thank you for uh, pastors who, who lead us into that truth as well. God, we pray that you would continue to build up other people uh, maybe some of these own students or, or others that you have prepared to, uh, to be teachers and pastors in your church so that they would joyfully also serve you in that calling. May you work so that we would see the joy of Jesus each day. Amen. Amen. You guys have a great day in school.